Yeah, that's Hi, good. How you doing? I'm okay. Pleasure, for sure. Um, well, Physical Novel, it's a brand which started in 2010. Mm -hmm. And basically, I was initially making stuff for myself. Mm -hmm. But then I had a lot of people asking me to make them stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I eventually got it into a store in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. What store? A2. Uh -huh. It's next to Autograph. But it's closed down now, but it was like the sister shop to Autograph. Okay. So I sold it in there for a few years and then I basically went on like a sort of like a trip around Europe. Mm -hmm. So I, I, took a, I took a lookbook with me, took some samples with me and just went around trying to get it in shops there. I um, managed to get it in a shop in Berlin and then went, went back to England and got it in a shop mm -hmm. in London. And then I've just been making it myself up until now. I was making it at home and then I got a studio about a year and a half ago mm -hmm. in Birmingham. So what is your goal with the brand? Well, my goal with the brand is to be an international brand, for it to be recognisable and for it to offer a certain lifestyle and reflect a certain lifestyle. Uh -huh. Like if you had to sum up your brand in one sentence, what would it be about? A dark streetwear with influences from techno. Oh, cool. See, th yeah, that helps frame it. This How is many pieces do you do a collection? That's what I was going to say. I do do quite a lot because I only make one of each and then oh. put, it on a, put it on the website and then and it's made to order them. and it's, it's made to order. How many orders do you get in total? How many hoodies do you make like a season? Like a hundred? Over a hundred, yeah. Like under 500? Under 500. Gotcha. And then how many stores? In stores. I've got, I sell it in a store. In like five stores total? Yeah, five stores total, yeah. You just like shoot it on models? Do you have, do you, like videos and films and content around it or no? Uh, at the moment, all, um, all that I can afford to do really is just, I use my lookbook images. Yeah. So that's it really. So like, this is my home page. This is where I put my lookbooks. So like, this is, these are the kind of images that I use on my Instagram. Just taking awesome. stuff like. Yeah, it's really great. Did you do those knit leggings too? Yeah, everything, uh, everything I've done designed, yeah. So the camouflage trousers are always in yeah. each co every collection. Yeah, it's great. It's like, you know, it's not a small thing. Your brand identity manifests itself in like a number of garments, which is, you know, great. Mm. Yeah, so my first collection, which I, which I, which I brought to Paris last year, um, is this jacket. It's like a bomber jacket, which I got made of Patrie. Mm -hmm. By a friend who got a friend that owns a factory. Mm -hmm. So I got that jacket made in there. But, cool. in, but initially I was like, because the, de the designs, my designs are more, usually more, more raw, but I've, I've, like mm -hmm. I filtered down the design, made it a bit more basic. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Cool. So this is all a part of the same collection. Oh, that that's that was SS sixteen, which I designed last year. Just like a in our genre, you know, I'm dealing with it within my collections too. It's like the idea that's important that students or you know other designers sort of register is that seasons kind of don't matter. Not not the literal uh, like in one sense, like the actual seasons don't matter. Like you wear whatever whenever. But the idea of like items that carry over versus like items that are like seasonal, like it exists this time and not like like a great jacket, for example, I like always to keep an offering of that just because yeah. it's like if you, often as a designer, you have to like come with like a hit idea and then it's like, damn, just because you put it out that one season, you yeah. can't like do it over again because a buyer or the public, it takes a while for it to become a classic. Yeah or whatever, you know, like paying attention to that. Not, not knowing if this appears in the next, but it's yeah. just something that inspired me by hearing what season something is. And in streetwear especially, I think it can be the same. You know, my first off-white season was the same men's collection twice. <laughs> and the theory behind that was like, it's a new idea, like a buyer that just sees it or a store like they might not get it right away. So like let the first buyers yeah. establish it so then they can look at it in another store, but it's not like they have to buy some, the next version of it. They can buy what they saw. So yeah. it, like it allowed people to sort of understand it. It was like a slower sell through, but it was a more 
potent sale through that launched the brand because it established that early adopters and then like the next wave of adopters could sort of yeah. like get it and then people could see it for longer than six months they saw it for a whole year and then could buy into it okay because that's that's something that kind of is my brand's all about because um because obviously i'm self self-taught yeah, yeah so I, like um i was asked to bring some designs for yeah, drawing yeah, yeah. stuff but i don't actually like do draw stuff i like envisage what i want it to look like 3d 3d and so that's why i've like i've got the, the, these trousers what the first trousers come, come out trousers that i made those are like, the very first ones yeah the first ones and then did you make them from vintage ones yeah like this this is like normal material and then this i, t I took a jacket apart yeah, yeah, and like yeah. attach the jacket to them, and obviously people like these trousers. So then, th these aren't the first ones. That, these aren't the first ones that I put out. But this is like the, the original, the, the original design. Oh, okay. Where I use two panels. Uh huh. And like I, I always, every connection that I do, I always make sure that I put some camouflage into it yeah, yeah, to yeah. the camo trousers. So like this is, so like what I do, I've, this is made from one pattern block. Uh huh. And what I've done now, on my newer design is. I've used the same block, but I've changed the design a bit. Yeah. So, like for instance, on this one, the pockets kind of the, the pockets just kind of used to come out. Uh huh. When people used to like people used to complain, so when the, the pocket put stuff take the stuff out the pocket, it comes out. Oh. So then, so then what I do each collection, I just improve the same designs. Yeah, if, yeah, you, if yeah. you get what I'm saying. That's smart. So like on this one now. The pocket, the pocket doesn't come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've like fixed. I fixed it. Consumer feedback. Yeah. What I would say. Did you ever release the ones that you're wearing? No, never. But everyone says that. But it's just a one-off. You, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's. I think these pants are so new and special that they're crazy good. <laughs> you know, like yeah. most people like would not have like a hit idea or a hit offering. And then when I see these, they're they're as good they're good, but they're simpler, which I think that if you just study like pant for pant, there's there's like 60 reasons why those are better than these. Yeah. Just like expediting the conversation, and every brand needs like a hit, like one thing that it's known for, or like the takeoff item. For me, it was like a graphic T-shirt or graphic hoodie with the Caravaggio, like it can be annoying, but it's like, without that, nothing else happens after that, because it, it gets the ball rolling, and then you can like play with it. Because obviously you love these, you know, these are your, your standard, yeah. you know, probably at a lesser l price point, like easy to manufacture. Then you have the in-between, not even, let's just say two for the matter of fact. Like, these should be out in the world. Are you opposed to putting them out? Well, the thing is, they was made in two separate occasions, so they was kind of, they're kind of just like thrown together, and but they ended, but they ended up good. Yeah, but that's yeah. like you know, like sometimes you're sitting on the land, you're sitting on the pot of gold. Yeah. With the benefit of these, they're de they're super designer. These are more designer than this, like yeah. in terms of like design credibility, design points. I'd sort of say. Like I'm not not trained in pattern cutting or anything. Yeah. So some some things that I want to do. I can't do like, for instance, like the jacket what these are made out of. I've had so many ideas for like an M65 jacket. The but, same vibe. But, uh, but I, can't, I, I can't make pockets like this. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but everything that I put out, I have to make. Obviously, I'm hearing what you want, but it also, there's a few different ways to get at that. Hire more people and build like the brand as a studio. You know, and that's another thing I would market. Be like, hey, there's this fashion kids in Birmingham that has a studio that make these camo pants and long hoodies that are really awesome. You know, like you can't, they don't sell them in mass quantities. That's the other thing to react against. It's like things, the trend is going towards mass it is not cool. Because I like, to me, a part of your overall creative direction brand story is I like the fact that you make it not in a factory. And of course, quantities, my suggestion, just the initial one, not the final one, is like your style of clothes there's something about you making it or being made in a studio that it's not made in a factory makes it more alluring in a way. You know, I can tell these you made from vintage and I can tell that the other ones are made in a factory because things have like a different sort of feel to it that necessarily isn't better. Like again, I struggle with that.
a lot, like, for my show, the things that we made, you know, are a little bit rougher, but they're exactly, I made them, you know, and it has that soul to it. With the look and feel of that, like, I think, I run, it's perfect that you, I'm sure you wear those, like, every day. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But <laughs> that on a rack is a better representation of you, literally, yeah. quite literally, because that's what you're, than, than these per se. Like these can be a support, but you know, most designers in the streetwear context might never have such a hit thing. And I would say that focusing on that, I can see it in a range of different stores between LA, Japan, Berlin, you know, and Asia with that more so than just this. Like if I saw this on the rack, I would be, and I'm not dissing these in any way. The fact is that these are so amazing that it could be kind of like, like a, you know, obviously like an acronym. I often think in like similar, you know, it's great pattern cutting for like technical things and they're sort of like product numbered in a certain way. And it's like, you have like lifelong followers of of these technical pens. I think it's like not on trend, but it's forward on trend. Okay. You know, because a lot of people do that. I do that with denim, but I've never seen it done with camouflage, different washes, and then the pattern of itself. And lastly, like not to get stuck up on you not being a pattern cutter. I'm not either. It's all about vision though. Like pattern cutters don't necessarily have vision. Like the way that you've made that is in like, it's an to me, it's like a new genre of pattern cutting, which is like sort of ready-made. It would be harder to have given this sketch to a pattern cutter to make that than the way you did it was like a very smart way. It's like take this and get that pocket the exact way and then you can wear yeah. it and you know what you would change about it. Like on your website should be you making it, you know, that conveys that these pieces are like almost like a couture version. People think of some factory, then they, they you know, it comes with, on a, or it comes to you in a plastic bag, and it's like it was no like tender love and care put towards it. So more of like a buy one lead thing, like yeah, like I'm sh I hope that your buyers know that they order it, that there's only one existing, and then that it's hand like you should be hand signing yeah. these things. You know, like it should have some remnant. That's what I call branding. You know, the the packaging branding should be in all like things that feel handmade. Because of course, like a critique would be, oh, it's like Rick Owens, but Rick Owens isn't, doesn't, Rick Owens has that sort of like factory feel, but it also has its like highly specific hand washed thing. Yours are literally handmade, you know, and it could be considered as like cheap, but it also, to me, could be considered more expensive. I would also ask like how you're calculating your prices because you should put your hand making time at like a rate and then factor that in how much it costs, like with the fabrics and shipping. Mm -hmm. I would think that, that it costs you more to make that. It could be like 350 and that's still inexpensive. I could see it for 600. There's stores in LA that would sell it right now that I can think of, like a store like H. Lorenzo that I think should carry the brand that would sell that for 650. So how do I make that transition? How do I get? How do I get there then? You do your research and find out these key specific stores that you know your brand falls in line in, and like, stay on them, send them pieces, even if you don't make the trip. To like, see what you think. Like, you know, just around the world in the key boutiques. So would you rather than say instead of sending like big quantities, just set just to the key boutiques, yeah, yeah, so yeah. just a few, yeah, just to get it out there, like exactly, like if okay. you can't make the trip or whatever, like being resourceful, like those buyers, I'm talking about like the H. Lorenzo, the specific store, like research them, but they're in Paris now, you know. Like if I was to go down the handmade route yeah, yeah, and yeah. then like sell my stuff for m more of a higher price point, yeah, how would you get those customers? Yeah, it's the buyers. For you, it's key is context. The store that I'm suggesting that you sell in LA, like it has to be more expensive. For you to be there, it has to be more expensive. Like they can't sell, they sell like Rick Owens, you know, and in a way you're sort of like competing with it, but they can't have the competitor be 600 or $500 yeah. less in their store. And by being in their store, when you have a meeting with the next store, Barney's, 
and they're like, hey, Greg Lauren pieces, which are in a similar genre, those are like $1,000 pieces. They can't have, they can't carry you at 100. And then the guy that's going in to buy the Greg Lauren piece looks at your brand and is like, this is, you know, this fits more my aesthetic or something like that. You know, they're gonna buy yours for 1,000. Like if you've had those at Colette, they would sell today. Or you could be like, I hate fashion, I hate how expensive stuff is, I don't want to be that brand. Then I would say, you know, go to a store like Oak, you know, in New York. That's, I'm just kind of, I'm telling you, I'm crafting one scenario, what I would do, given your natural skill set and creative direction. I would tweak those little zones, and then I think you would have a stronger brand. So this is your intermediate advice, not the long term. But I'm saying this is the basis. And then once you achieve that, and you have like crazy fever in the market, which is like stores get it, they sell it, call, buyers are calling you wanting more. Once you hit that plateau, then it's like, I need to find manufacturing to make the commercial part of the collection, but the main part of the collection is these six kids now, because it went from three to six that are in Birmingham, like making the collection part, which is the part that you want that constantly keeps everything fresh, but like, so now that hoodie becomes something that's made there, but then your you're, you're 2.0 version of type three hoodie, you know, that's creative direction of the brand. For, for me, it's kind of... It's, are you kind of over it? Like you I'm don't want to be like, oh, I've, I've been looking at these for no, six no, no. years, like I don't want, no, just I'm fine with that, you know. With, with me, it's a case of, everything. it's all about timing for me, like, my designs have kind of got more, not more simple, but they've got more manageable over time. Oh, gotcha. Do you get what I mean? Which also, oh, so you kind of like ref made it simpler so you can get it done. Yeah. Which is scary. It's scary only in that like you're supremely talented and it should be the other way around. If you only made 10 of, they were that intricate and you only made 20, then they're more valuable and then they're, you know, you're gonna impress more people with that level than your simplified level. If you have something that's just great and speaks to the brand and is the essence of where it started, you should be able to, in a way, you know, like for me, it's like I started with the Pyrex hoodie. A lot of that was made just as a moment in time, but what did I do after that? I just offered a similar aesthetic, but it was different. So if you own the first version, it, what I saw that was alarming from an advice standpoint is your latest version was like steps lower than this version where you started. It should be the other way around, where like, it would be fine if the other ones were crazier than that, had like straps or something, but I don't, I don't believe in getting rid of such a classic. I believe okay. in it should always be seasonal and there can be lower versions that are less expensive and more couture versions, but that's your, your brand is that. Um, and I would change the typeface. <laughs> yeah, really. Exactly. I'm just saying, like, for me to like make a mark, I had to jump backwards and go full graphics. You know, that's how I got my start. I actually don't like, gra you know, I usually wear like a black tee and like a more comfortable without graphics. Or you know, like my favorite brand is Chrome Hearts because it's like it's a consistent graphic uh, look. Within graphics, there's like like entry level, there's a mid tier, and then there's like top level, and you know, like a font that you can just find, that might be readily on your computer, that's like, I would say, if used in just like a straight up way, that's like the base level. There's nothing under that. Then I would say, in the genre of something that, I'm just using as a comparison, like a, say like Cavent, which to me is like the top highest end of like, graphic design that's on clothing in terms of like its, its developed level of like original typefaces and juxtaposition with images and, and the application, maybe it's on like a, a piece of cotton and then that's sewn on and then there's a screen print under it, you know. So those two ranges are like where things can live. You know, there's developed typefaces and there's ones that are, are sort of more basic and I think for your brand, to do justice to those pants. <laughs> you know, it's like you things you make have different tiers and your hoodies and the handmade quality of that and then the, the pants are so like soulful and like high level 
that as soon as you put anything on it, it immediately can take it up or down. Okay. Like if, if your hoodie was at a low level and your pants were at a low level, then at least they're all the same. But it's like one small, di one zipper, one thing, the length of the, the, the puller or something. When that goes, and it, it strikes people a different way. And I like, look at fully developed product as like a Chanel jacket, you know, or a Louis Vuitton bag. There's not one thing on it that throws it, you know, if this Louis Vuitton bag had like a YKK zipper, the whole thing is like thrown off. And that's what's like supreme level product. You know, that's why Supreme to me is great, it's because it's not expensive, but it's, it's so honest and it's whole, it's so well thought out, every minutia. So for you, even on the website, when I see it at the top of the website, it doesn't do justice. I see the core of your brand like centered around this military thing. If, that, if the camo is every season, like I would study like vintage military tags and I would just get a tight face off of there. Because immediately you'd put that on the hoodie, then they're speaking the same graphic language, same typeface, maybe it's really small. And you know, it's great that you have it there because it gives people brand identity. You know, in streetwear, that's how people know that's a physical novel piece. You know, you don't even need it on there either. You have enough strong details within the piece itself that it's like, some can have it on there, some cannot. You know, it could be here, should it be here, should it be here, you know. Should it be on a tag that's removable, so if you want to keep the physical novel thing on it, you can, for people that are more discreet, you know. That's a $100,000 idea. <laughs> <laughs> you think I should shrink it down to a capsule collection of more, um, more strong pieces? I think no more. That, well, what I saw the photos of looked great. I'm, I also, like, hate editing down. Obviously I make too many pieces. Can I it's like stopping one idea like feels wrong to me. It's like not letting the creative energy flow. But as far as understanding your brand, I think it can be summed up with like two jackets, four fleece pieces, you know, a bag, three pants, three camo pants, and like a legging, a short, and a sweatpant however many pieces that is, like, then I would be like, I can understand it, it's all there, my brain, you don't have to look through racks, and that's what gets tough for buyers, and especially, you know, like my collections first were just like, you know, like five things, and you just tell the whole story, and then people can just buy the whole thing, buy into it, or like, oh, just like this jacket, this hoodie, you know. You have the camo pants, so you just have to like, support around that and then you're golden. Okay. Like you should do a record bag. Or you know, or like a you know, DJ's carry headphones and a USB stick. Like there should be a physical novel. And then if I saw that, then you're like killing it with a brand concept because I'm like, "Oh, this is this techno." You know, he totally gets it. Like it says techno without like that's the offering. And it's inspired by the scene that you kind of happened upon like that's like you know, DJ culture, because you're also servicing the DJ, but also the fans of the, the type of music. So they want to dress like that too, and they want the accessory. I think a bag, is like a camo, like do one in black and do one made out of jacket. Yeah, that's a good idea, man. $200,000. <laughs> I want to feel that, like when you go to the site, this should be like your favorite techno releases or something. Like there should be music playing. It should yeah. be like, it should be fully, and it, yeah, I believe in small. Like to answer your question, it should be no more than that. Because before I, I did, um, I was going to do like a obviously PN physical novel. I was going to do like a PN radio, yeah, and then get like send close to DJs and do like a proper photo shoot with them, and then it's got their bio on the website. And yeah, then yeah, and their release. You should and have stuff a like crew, that. build your tribe. You know, physical novels like your gang. It's not only. The, you know, it can be like, yeah, just supporting young DJs. You should be outreaching, hitting them on Instagram, being like, hey, I'm a fan of your thing. I'm starting my line, you know. If you need stuff for a shoot, like those kids will hit you back. Yeah. Like if that's still, if that's your thing, just like, just support, find artists, new up and coming, established people, give them clothes, shoot video, put those out. 
release music, you know, just in that space. Don't spend any money and just foster the culture, I would say. It's wasted money. To sp you don't need to. It should just, you know, spend by just giving people that you respect and getting some content off of it. You'll find a new magic in that. Because it's quite funny because it's like these camo trousers which inspired uh -huh. the whole brand to, to where it's come to uh, four years down the line. But you've took it back to right back to the essence of it, where it all started from, and, yeah. and you've got you, you've got the you've you've got the feeling of what it, what it's all about yeah. from these trousers, and that's yeah. what it, that's what inspired it really. So I think it's about going back to the roots rather than you know moving too too quick. Yeah. Yeah. When you said techno, that let me know that you're beyond the aesthetic. And then when you said that the camo pants happen every season, then it has like. I think so to me it's like oh this is the brand that has like not being uh, annoying or whatever it's like oh it's in my you know just the way I ask people to sum up their brand in one sentence like you know off-white like oh, it's streetwear <laughs> that's what I would say about my own brand it's a misconception but at least people can put it in a box so they're like it's the brand with the, the line screen printed everywhere or something like that for yours I would be like it's more sophisticated than mine I would say it's the brand with like long hoodies that does camo pants, like really cool camo pants that you can't buy anywhere. You know, that's enough of a, a hook. Like if it was lacking in a sort of like bull few bullet point things, I would like to say force you to be like, oh, can you give your brand an identity? I think the affinity for camo, you know, like look at Maharishi, you know, like a, s a study of camouflage, but then also has you know, embroidery and, you know, I think you have the elements now and you have sales, which is like two things. I think making it more efficient in each zone of getting more stores, you know, and you're going to sell through there and then someone's going to see it there and they're going to start wearing it and then it's going to like go from there. I think your goal, like let's talk about it like this maybe, like next to your goals, because once you reach those goals, it'll present a set of like new questions to answer and you can prioritize them. I think for your brand, two things need to happen, can be congruently, it should be in more stores, and I think more work on branding and marketing it, you know, I say they can congruent, like being in more stores will give you more visibility, but I think like on your website and things, it's, it can be developed like the branding and I see the label too and like the tag. I feel like more work on that and more work on being like, you know, building up the Instagram and like building the followers up yeah. and doing more shoots and doing things with techno artists so that it's it comes across people's eyeballs and mind share through more means and that might be you know if you can't afford it but like finding a kid in berlin or whatever who's like you know like kids that are promoters and having them feel like a part of the brand finding other creatives and letting them do shoots with your clothing that falls in line like that work is going to have to be done anyways to sort of grow because i think more people need to see that. Like, have you had posts on like Hype Beast and things like no, that? I've never not been on there, no. Yeah, like, you know, it's it's a nature of the business of fashion is like, you know, new means of getting marketing. And I think that's not to be overlooked. And again, I think looking at your product and looking at what I identify as the best, it's sort of like your website should be redesigned maybe where, in a broad sense, it's like, this is what the brand is. It's these camo pants. And then it's around it are these different series of hoodies that sometimes appear and sometimes not. You can get this feeling that it's more like a catalog. And I just reference like the brand acronym. I'm not fully versed in it, but I know it enough to know that it's expertly sort of like, you're buying like almost like military pieces. And I think my opinion, yours could definitely differ is I love the idea that it's handmade. Speaking of the price point, I think the aesthetic of it warrants a higher price point than it might be. I can tell by your story that you're making clothes for people that appreciate it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you want someone that's not casually like, oh, I need a, a hoodie and it's like cold out. Like 
I'll grab an American Apparel. Oh, I'll just grab a physical novel thing. It's like a cheap hoodie. Uh, am I right? Like you put passion behind yeah. your clothes. Like this des- to me, that's designer. <laughs> that's the difference between mass-made clothing and and designer clothing. Is someone sat there and had a story, and they went to Berlin, listened to techno, and then they make these things that fit a unique. Thing. You know, they have these pants, and they feel passionate about them. My opinion is that designer clothing is expensive. I would add that to your sort of like things to think about is that you know some some people might have a concept that isn't worthy of a high end store, worthy of being sold at that, worthy of being an H. Lorenzo. Just using it as an example, and because you are, shows the strength of your concept. 